Hello everyone and welcome back. Till the previous session we have observed the restoring division algorithm. In this session we are going to observe the non-restoring division procedure. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today we will first acquire the understanding of non-restoring division. Thereafter we will observe the derivation of non-restoring division algorithm. Now during the restoring division, if you remember, we had been performing awful lot of restorations whenever the subtractions result became negative, didn't we? And how did we perform the restoration? We had been performing the restoration using this. Basically, the contents of the accumulator after the subtraction, if it became negative, we had to perform this addition to restore the contents of the accumulator. Now let's carefully observe the steps involved in this particular restoring algorithm. If you notice, after the initializations, we are performing the left shift of the contents of AQ. That is this register pair of accumulator and Q register. Basically, instead of shifting the divisor, we are now shifting the dividend towards the left. Now after left shift of AQ, we are performing the subtraction and finally, if the result of the accumulator is positive, then we set Q0 to 1. Otherwise, we set Q0 to 0 and restore accumulator's content. Now, these are the main three steps involved in restoring division. However, if we alter the sequence of these operations, we actually can get rid of this restoration procedure. So basically, what we will do at the first step, if the content of the accumulator register is greater than 0, that means if the accumulator includes a positive value, in that case, we are going to perform left shift of the AQ first. Thereafter, we will perform the subtraction. However, if it is negative, in that case, we will perform left shift of AQ as well. But this time, instead of performing the subtraction, we will be performing the addition. Anyway, either we perform the subtraction or the addition. After that, we are going to check the content of the accumulator register once again. And if that is greater than zero or that is positive, in that case, we are going to set Q0 to 1, else we will set Q0 to 0. So this is going to be our newly modified sequences of operations. However, by the end, if the content of the accumulator still is a negative value, that will mean we have subtracted one time too many. In that case, we will have to perform the restoration one last time. And this will be the only time we perform the restoration procedure. Let me walk you through the process for better illustration. So we are going to have the same things. That is the M register is going to include 0, 1, 1, that is 3. The accumulator is going to be initialized with zeros and the content of the Q register will be 1, 1, 1, that is 7, that is the dividend. And alongside these, we are going to have the count register as well, which will store the number of bits inside the dividend, which is 3 in this case. So let's begin the process. During the first iteration, we are at first going to check whether the content of the accumulator is positive or not. Now observe, the MSB of the accumulator is zero, which signifies positive. Now in case of the contents of the accumulator is positive, in that case, we are going to perform the left shift first, then we are going to perform the subtraction. So let's perform the left shift first. Now if we left shift the content of AQ, it will look something like this. Now we are yet to determine this Q0. Now before that, since it is positive, we are to perform the subtraction. So let's perform the subtraction now. Now if you remember, we have been performing two's complement subtraction, haven't we? So in that case, 0, 1, 1 is supposed to be changed into two's complement form. So this will become 1, 0, 1. Now why is so? If you remember, this is the first one from the left hand side towards the right hand side. So we are going to retain it. And once we have retained it, the bits afterwards are going to be toggled. So this one will become 0 and this one is going to be 1. So 1, 0, 1. Now notice this. 1, 0, 1 will be 5 and 0, 0, 1 is 1. Now if we perform the addition, it is going to be 6, which happens to be 1, 1, 0 in terms of binary. Now apparently this looks like 6. However, this is not exactly 6 because we are having two's complement representation, aren't we? And during two's complement, we all know the place values. This is going to have the place value 1. 
this is going to have the place value 2 and the MSB is going to have the place value minus 4. So minus 4 plus 2 is going to result minus 2. So this one right here is actually minus 2 instead of 6. Which is correct by the way because 1 minus 3 is supposed to give us minus 2 only. Now once we are done with the subtraction, we are supposed to move to the second step. That is, if ACC is greater than 0, then we set Q0 to 1, otherwise we set Q0 to 0. Now what about the content of the accumulator? Since it is having 1 in the MSB, clearly this is a negative 1. That means we are going to set Q0 as 0. And with this, the count is becoming 2. Now coming to the second iteration, observe, the content of the accumulator register is negative. And when it is negative, we are supposed to go with this. So basically, we will perform the left shift and thereafter we will perform the addition. So let's perform the left shift first. Now once we perform the left shift, it will look something like this. And thereafter, we are supposed to perform the addition. So let's do that now. Now 101 is 5 and 011 is 3. Now 5 plus 3 is going to be 8. However, since we are using 3 bits only, 8 cannot be represented using 3 bits. And since we are using 2's complement, therefore we are going to discard the carry. Now observe the content of the accumulator. This is positive. And when it is positive, we get to set Q0 to 1. So let's do that. Now with this, the count becomes 1. Moving ahead, during the third iteration, we get to check the content of the accumulator first and it is positive. And when it is positive, we are supposed to follow this. So let's perform the left shift first. So this is going to be the result after left shift. And now we are supposed to perform the subtraction. So let's perform the subtraction. Now this is similar to this case. So the result is going to be 110 again. And since it is negative, therefore in Q, the Q0 will be set as 0. And with this, the count becomes 0. Now as you can see, we already have achieved our quotient, that is 2. However, the content of the accumulator is still negative. And we know, by the time the count reaches 0, if the accumulator content is still less than 0, we are supposed to restore it. So let's restore this. So if we restore it, it will be 001. Now why it is going to be 001? Because if you remember, before the subtraction was performed, the content of the accumulator was 001. So this is going to be our restored value. And look, this is the remainder. Basically, if we divide 7 by 3, we are supposed to get the quotient as 2 and the remainder as 1. Now look at the procedure. We didn't really have to perform restoration all the time around whenever the result was negative. We only had to restore the contents that to by the end and that's because the content of the accumulator register was less than 0 or negative. Let's derive the algorithm now. So we will basically start and we will perform the initializations as same as the previous one. Now after we are done with the initializations, thereafter we will first check whether the content of the accumulator is greater than 0 or not. Or in other words, whether it is positive or negative. If it is positive, we are going to perform the same drill that is left shift of AQ and perform the subtraction. However, if it happens to be negative, in that case, the left shift will be performed as it is. However, instead of subtraction this time, we are going to perform addition. Now after we perform either one of these, we are going to check whether the content of the accumulator is still positive or negative. And this time, if it is negative, we are going to set Q0 to 0. Else, we are going to set Q0 to 1. And thereafter, we will reduce the count's value. Now, once it is reduced, we are going to check whether it is 0 or not. Because if it is not 0, we are going to repeat this entire procedure. However, if it is 0, we are going to check whether the content of the accumulator register is positive or not one last time. And if it is positive, we are going to stop. However, if it is negative, we are going to perform the restoration only once. So this is the algorithm of the non-restoring division method. So in this session, we first acquired the understanding of non-restoring division. Thereafter, we observe the derivation of non-restoring division algorithm.
All right, people, that will be all for this session. I hope the concept of non restoring division is now clear to you. With this, we have come to the end of chapter 3, that is, number systems. So, I hope to see you in the next chapter. Thank you all for watching.